So we have here my birthday present from my sister, which is, as you can see, a Nerfix 148 scale English Electric Lightning F1 or F1A, which is the most recent edition of um, one of Nerfix's um, better quality kits, even though it is quite old now, it's from 1997, so it's almost 20 years old, um, and it's from a period when Nerfix, before the modern Nerfix, were owned by Humbrol and were still uh, putting out the older kits from the heyday of Earthix in the 1960s and 70s. And they definitely weren't up to the uh, modern standards of um, other manufacturers at that time. Um, now, which is to say, which you know isn't to say that those kits are uh, not worth doing. They are um, fun to do and they allow you a, a chance to um, deploy your modelling skills and hone your modelling skills. Certainly, uh, found Far Eastern kits like Tamiya and Hasegawa and the more recent Revel kits to be uh, very easy indeed after learning on Earthix kits of uh, older vintage. But um, this particular kit, the English Electric Night Lightning one from 1997, and also the late Mark Spitfire and Seafire, which came out about the same time, were an attempt by Earthix of the day to uh, meet the prevailing modern standards and um, they certainly did that and even today they are still of some of Earthix better kits. Unfortunately um, that renaissance was short lived and uh, Earthix went into a kind of doldrums period until um, Humbrol eventually went bankrupt in about 2006 and was bought up by um, Hornby. And that's the start of the modern Earthix, and uh, now Earthix kits have reached a very high standard indeed. They've had a genuine renaissance, but this is an opportunity to uh, see if this uh, false start still holds up. So this is the most recent edition of that kit, which is the F1A or F1. Um, there's also the F6, and I do have a, an F6 somewhere at home as well. Um, this is kit number A09179, which means it's a Series 9 kit, uh, which means it's a larger kit, more expensive kit. So we can see that the box art shows the, uh, I think it's 56 Squadron display team, which is and it's a very nice piece of box art indeed, showing your altitude. Uh, we have uh, three options in this kit. We have that. Uh, same aircraft as depicted on the box art. We have um, another natural metal edition and um, a camouflage version. I think these are both F1As with cannon in the nose. This is an F1 without cannon. So this is the modern style, most recent style of Earthix box. So yeah, it's a very typical Earthix box. We have um, small pictures on the side of the box, however these are just um, the same picture as the top of the box which is a little bit disappointing. It would have been nice to see perhaps um, finished model or CAD drawings as the uh, side of the box. On this side of the box we have the three uh, decal options and we have a, a potted history of the um, lightning with um, some dimensions, 350mm long. 225 millimeters across, 149 pieces. We have the three um, decal options, which are um, 56 Squadron uh, display team, 1963, uh, 74 Squadron um, at Cottis Hall, 1962, and the F1 uh, training flight uh, in 1980. That's a very late <coughs> F1. I think they were mostly F6s by then. Of course, the Lightning was um, designed in the 1950s as a interceptor, a pure interceptor, and was um, intended to fly from bases in the eastern part of the United Kingdom and uh, achieve a very, very rapid climb rate to intercept any Soviet bombers which may be uh, attempting to enter British airspace, and it was designed to intercept those and uh, fire the red top or fire streak missiles you can see in the picture. Um, it was very fast, it was Mach 2, it's the only purely British designed aircraft to reach Mach 2 
and um, and its main drawback was it is very short endurance because it was designed purely for that purpose. It was not really a dog fighting aircraft. It wasn't designed to um, intercept other fighters. Only only bombers. Uh, rumor has it. I've read in places on the internet that it could uh, intercept U uh, two under circum certain circumstances, but I don't think that's a well documented event. On the bottom of the box, we see um, an advert for the Earthic Club. You can join if you like. You'll get. Um, the ability to collect flying hours, which are tokens you get with the kits. I think this one has um, three uh, three flying hours, and if you collect these tokens, you can uh, send off for discounts on kits and things. If you're in the club, you get a catalogue and other things. So you know, if you want to join that, you can. All right, so let's have a look and see what is in the box. So we have the instructions, these are the modern Earthix instructions which are in colour and have, um, those are the decals, and have um, more modern CAD drawings of the stages. And we have um, the parts in a single bag, you can see it actually makes into quite a large, um, quite a large model. And we can see you find the engraved panel lines. We'll take a close look at those in a moment. And you see the uh, clear parts are in a separate bag. The box itself is quite thick cardboard, uh, which is good because it will stand up to some storage uh, handling. So let's take a look at the instructions to begin with. Uh, these are the new Earthix um, colour instructions of the very latest type and we have um, the three decal options in colour. We have the same potted history of the um, lightning we have on the side of the box. We have some brief specifications, so it could do with more really, but um, these days it's not difficult to come up with specifications. Okay, so we have the different languages and we have the brief and seven the instructions and um, key to the instructions. So these are the modern type of perfect instructions. We have um, grey colours for standard parts and when we have a sub-assembly from a previous step it's coloured in red. So we have standard Earthix uh, Humbrol numbers as the colours. And I think some more recent, or some other manufacturers use um, colour uh, in the actual instructions to sort of indicate the, the paint colours, but that isn't done here, and I doubt the um, colours would be reproduced very accurately on this kind of uh, paper. It's on um, ordinary paper, it's not glossy, but it's fine. We can see we have the ejection seat, which is um, two parts, and we have a cockpit tub, which is quite simple. We have both um, engraved mouldings, I think, and we have transfers we intend to use, um, decals for the instructions. Um, ah, no, we have more parts of the seats. We have the two halves of the ejector seat. We have the um, top um, handles to, dis uh, to activate the ejector seat. And we have the actual seat itself, which come together in the cockpit tub with the throttle and the joystick. Interestingly, we have um, uh, an adjustment required to fit the pilot into the um, cockpit. We have to slit his um, knees at the back and bend his legs so it will fit in. I think it must have been some kind of error in manufacture. Um, at the bottom here, we have the um, radome and uh, shock cone, which is the nose of the plane, and we are instructed to include 20 grams of uh, nose weight. Stop it, tail sitting. Yep, so here is the um, shock cone going into the intakes, and we have one um, turbine face, which is for the lower engine, I think. We probably wouldn't be able to see the upper one, so it's no big deal. Uh, we have the jet pipes at the rear, and the assembly of the fuselage. We have to drill out some holes for the three options. Uh, yes, we have some rear uh, jet. Um, Pipe detail for the back of the turbines and the afterburners. 
the wings coming together. Simple construction. The clear parts are in blue. Come together there. And then essentially after 16 steps it's essentially substantially complete. And then we have um, gear which is installed. Is there a gear up version if you want to uh, put it on a stand in flight? It would seem not, although um, it wouldn't be too difficult to do that, although that might require some uh, filler to achieve that, because the doors often don't fit perfectly if they're not intended to do so, or sometimes even if they are intended to do so. Here goes the red, red top and the fire streak missiles, it looks like. The red top is only used for the 56 squadron, and the fire streak can be used for both the 56 and 74 squadron, or, but not the training flight. We have a tiny clear um, nose cone for the heat seeking missile and then some cable cable um, runs for the uh, side of the fuselage and then essentially it is complete so as per the more recent ethics we have a nice colour um, painting and decaling instructions for 56 quadrant and 74 squadron. The standard Humbrol colours are used, although it does give you a um, an actual description of the colour and a sort of colour um, print, although who knows how accurate that is. But at least gives you a starting point. Um, same for the 74 squadron, which I think is the one that I will do. I prefer the black and the uh, tiger stripes to the red crimson. And we have the, um, the camo, standard sort of 1970s, 80s RDF camo for the training flight, which is slightly wrap around on the wings. Obviously this is uh, the one you'd do if you weren't so keen on the natural metal finish, which is something I haven't really done. It would be an interesting um, exercise. And then we have a common um, stencil sort of pattern for all three versions. And the back is blank, so that's the instructions. These are the um, decals which come with the um, kit. These are cartograph um, produced according to the box and they look uh, to be in ex extremely good register with um, a, fair, a fair bit of um, carrier film. It's noticeable especially on the lettering of course and uh, if you were doing the lettering um, it may be advisable to cut each individual lettering a letter out in order to reduce the um, carrier film so that um, doesn't show up as much. Obviously if you're doing the um, natural metal finish it can be difficult depending on the type of um, metal paint you use um, to put on a uh, a clear gloss coat to do the decals so that's the kind of thing you have to deal with if you're doing a natural metal finish. Uh, the stencils look very really legible the cockpit decals are in black only, black and clear which is a bit of a shame as the cockpit is painted black so they probably won't show up very well um, I think because the uh, cockpit detail is raised I would prefer to paint those rather than use the transfers and also they are, because there is raised cockpit detail you need to use quite a lot of um, decal solvent to make them uh, bed down on there So. The uh, Phoenix from the 56 Squadron is very well reproduced, and the Tiger from the 74 Squadron also. It looks a um, good reproduction. The stenciling is very legible. Um, so, yeah, the decals are certainly an improvement on the uh, old um, Humbrol era Urfix decals, which are very, very poor indeed, with poor register, and um, were very thin. So, definitely usable. Of course, aftermarket ones are available. So here we have the parts. These are the fuselage halves which are the uh, main parts of the aircraft and we can immediately see we have pretty fine recessed panel detail with some riveting um, which was, and these are some of the first Earthix kits in 148 scale to have recessed panel line detail um, and this is one of the reasons this, this was a breakthrough kit for Earthix at the time. So we have very fine 
uh, very fine detail. It, it, it isn't the um, soft kind of detail which is um, more typical of more recent Urfix kits. This plastic um, is more like the hard type of plastic you'll be familiar with Tamaya or Hasegawa or some Revel kits um, and it differs in that respect. So. Um, it's of a typical 1990s good kit standard, I'd say. Perhaps these days it would be a bit better, but certainly this is a very high quality moulding for the fuselage. I can't see any sink marks off hand. It looks good. The interior, the cockpit interior is very simple indeed, as it is a tub. Um, we have a Urfix 1997 trademark inside so that dates it exactly so yeah this is a very very good uh, it looks like there's a little flash on it as well maybe a little bit on the smaller parts on the cable runs but overall very good quality indeed solid here we have a, uh, a sprue with the Red Top and the Fire Street missiles, and we have some other detail, such as the cable runs, some undercarriage, including the wheels, and cockpit detail, including the pilot. The pilot looks very well moulded indeed. He has the um, separate arms for pausability, and you'll need to slash his knees, as you've seen. You'll need to hamstring the poor fellow. Um, He's not wearing his oxygen mask, which might be a impediment to in flight if you were doing it uh, in flight, perhaps in intercept um, of a Russian burr or a bison. We can see the cockpit, de the cockpit detail, the instrument panel has a good raised detail, certainly would take good dry brushing, I think. The cockpit tub looks a little plain, uh, it has some side detail. Um, yeah, so certainly could. Uh, I don't know if there are any aftermarket kits for this. Perhaps it's worth having a look. We have air brakes. We have the ejector seat, which looks to be pretty sharply detailed. The detail on this kit is very sharp indeed, actually, considering um, it's vintage and the age of the moulds, presumably. Uh, it has been in use for 20 years continuously. The exhaust of the jets is pretty cleanly moulded, sharply moulded and quite thin at the um, edge of the um, exhaust so perhaps you can get away without resin exhaust for this. The undercarriage legs are substantial and again sharply moulded. We have um, the outer exhausts and other parts again. So yeah, we're not seeing much flash on here. Well, these are the cannons and the plates that go over the cannon in the F1 version. So yep, yeah, good set of detail without flash. So this is a good sprue. Here we have the um, main wing parts and the tail, vertical tail. We have options for the F6 version which has the uh, square cut tail and the F1 version as in this kit which has a rounded tail so it looks like it should be possible to build both versions perhaps um, if you have decals for the other although there may be some other parts missing I know the F6 version of the kit comes with Feddy tanks and I'm not sure if these are included in this version of the kit so we have the lower wings again the wings have similar um, very fine sharp panel detail as does the tail compatible to the fuselage we have some uh, parts, I think, for the spine run. We have the uh, intake trunking, the shock cone, nose cone, and we have turbine details, so I suppose. These are the details of the afterburner, afterburner cans, which seem sharp enough. Not sure how accurate they are, and the turbine face for the lower engine. Uh, and we have the tail components. See if we have eject pin marks inside the intake trunking. There seems to be some uh, about halfway in. Uh, they could do with tidying up. There's one, two in each. It's got you raised four 
a three in each uh, in each part of the intake trunking and they will need cleaning up although it's unclear how uh, prominent they will be when you have the uh, intake cone in place they may not be very visible the inner part of the intake trunking which houses the um, shot cone and the undercarriage is here we can see the undercarriage detail which has a, a couple of uh, jet pin marks which will need to be cleaned up although again it may not be visible once it's put together you can dry test fitting to see if that is the case um, that's okay we have the uh, rear part of the engines where we have some detail but we also have some eject pin marks in there which may well be a bit more visible because obviously the is hollow for a good way into uh, the engines until you see the afterburner faces so these may, may need cleaning up we do have some ridge detail in there here we have the upper parts of the wings we have similar uh, detail quality on the in, uh, incised panel lines and inspection hatches, a bit of riveting. The box art shows some very uh, prominent riveting, although you can have to consult photographs for that if you wanted to add that riveting. Uh, looks like there is some um, marking on the uh, elevators, elevons or ailerons, uh, ailerons on the um, rear part of the wings. I'm not sure if that will show up through the paint. It looks like there is some uh, webbing perhaps in there. Uh, and it looks like the surface is a little bit marred with scratches um, on both sides of the wings. I'm not sure how well that is showing up. But that will need... Um, if that shows up through the paint it might need polishing a bit. We should doing a natural metal finish, although it may be of uh, of uh, a, a type which is actually uh, appropriate for the scale, 148 scale. Obviously, the um, once the aircraft is uh, by in use, it will pick up some uh, scratches on the skin of the metal, and these may not be too um, out of place uh, on the aircraft. Although this sort of webbing, which may be mold damage on the um, ailerons, may need um, attention if it shows up through the paint. So that's the inner part, um, that's fine, and these uh, doors seem smooth enough, not much detail on them. Here we have some small sprue with uh, undercarriage doors, there are some eject pins inside the main undercarriage doors which will need some cleaning up. And there's, uh, perhaps a little bit of flash on these small doors, although it may actually, that's not flash, it's actually detail, which is good. It's got a thin, uh, a thin layer on the uh, edge of the um, door, which is, which is good. All those inject pin marks will need attention, unless they are actually possibly a, uh, a detail on the original doors, although I doubt it because they're circular, they will need filling up. So here we have the clear parts, um, essentially the cockpit, canopy, uh, windscreen and um, some lights and some nose cones for the missiles. These look pretty clear actually, pretty thin. Uh, let's have a look at the kind of distortion we're getting. Okay, so there is some distortion. The windscreen is perfectly clear because it's flat. But the canopy has some distortion, although it doesn't have uh, it does have quite heavy framing on it, uh, and there are some scratches on the sides of the canopy, which will need uh, polishing out or dipping in clear or similar. But otherwise, the windscreen is perfectly flat, uh, although it's a little bit um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Certainly better for the nerve fix of the, ta of the time, and there's a bit of flash on it, which is the only flash you've actually seen on the uh, kit so far, so, very good. So, opinions, um, it's a very good kit, it's certainly of um, 
very, very good standard from 20 years ago and it still holds up perfectly. There is no evidence of flash really on the kit that, is very, that I've seen so far. The surface de detail is very sharp. Um, it racks perhaps the kind of riveting you might see these days that gives you the opp opportunity to try out uh, a rosy riveter tool or similar. The plastic is very sharp. Uh, the cockpit detail is pretty sparse. It would benefit from uh, an ejector seat and um, some photo etch if that is available. I haven't checked if it is yet, but it's an opportunity to look, it out, uh, look up and see if that would be something I'd be interested in doing when I'm building the kit. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't have too many ejector pin marks in prominent locations. It's a very well engineered kit. It has, I'd say, stood up to the test of time. Almost 20 years old now, it's still of a very fine um, quality. It stands up uh, very well to Earthix's more recent kits. Um, uh, certainly uh, is of an equivalent type of quality, although it does have um, perhaps um, even today it is better than some of Earthix's more recent kits, which have perhaps slightly softer panel line detail. I think this was an experiment by Earthix in the 1990s to come up with a, um, uh, a modern kit and perhaps it was a little bit too expensive for them at the time, which is why they never really made any more than the two kits they made, the Lightning and the Spit Late Mart Spitfire. Um, if you read the um, Arthur Ward Earthix kit book, it actually talks about um, how these kits uh, were made. Um, I think the book came out a few years after these came out, before the Humbrol collapse, and it talks about how Earthix, um, long uh, serving Earthix um, designer Trevor Snowden was involved in the um, genesis of these kits, so that's a fairly interesting read.